In this example, we're dropping a block of mass two kilograms through a height of five meters onto the tip of a spring with a constant of 2,500 newtons per meter. And we're trying to figure out several things here. I want to find the speed of the block right before it impacts the spring. I want to find, of course, the maximum compression of the spring. And then finally, I want to find the acceleration of the block when it's at that maximum compression point. I know it will be accelerating upward because it's about to bounce back up to the same height that it came from if energy is going to be conserved. So let's get started with the speed question. And I'm, I'm going to write down energy conservation, but I have to have a reference point for my potential energy. So what I'm going to do in this case is put y equals zero right here. So at the tip of the uncompressed spring. And that means I had y equals 5 up here. It also means that when I get deeper into the problem, I'm going to have to use a negative y down here. So that should be interesting. So my speed question, I have in my initial state, gravitational potential energy, mgy. In my final state, I have no more gravitational potential energy. I'm right there at y equals 0. And all my energy is going to be kinetic. Turns out the mass doesn't matter for this part. I get v squared equals 2gy. I square root both sides. And v is the square root of 2gy, which is the square root of 2 times 9.8 times 5. And to 3 sig figs, I get 9.90 meters per second. So that piece is done. Next, I'm looking at the maximum compression part. And for that, you could use energy conservation going from the middle picture where everything is kinetic, down to the third picture. Um, or you could use energy conservation going all the way back to the start of the problem. And I think it's actually going to be simpler if I just go all the way back to the start. So I'm going to write down my energy conservation equation. So in the initial state, I had all potential energy. I'll just write mgy initial. In my final state, the mass is now below the zero that I created for measuring my y coordinate. And so I have to put that coordinate in. If I'm using x max for the compression, then the y coordinate here is actually negative x max. So in my final state, I have this negative gravitational potential energy. Negative x max is the y coordinate. Um, there's no kinetic energy in the final state because the block is at the maximum compression. That's where it's turning around. But there is spring potential energy. So plugging numbers into this, I have 2 times 9.8 times 5 is 2 times 9.8 times negative x max plus 1 half times 2,500 x max squared. And I'm going to clean things up and move it all to one side of the equation because I'm going to have to use the quadratic formula on this. And when I do that, I get 1250, just moving everything to the right-hand side, 1250 x max squared minus 19.6 x max minus 98 equals zero. And at this point, I have to either plug into the quadratic formula manually or use technology to do it. And when I ran this through the quadratic formula, I got one positive answer and one negative answer. And the positive one is the physical one here. And I got x max is equal to 0.288 meters, or 28.8 centimeters. So there's that part. Finally, we're going to get the acceleration of this mass at the maximum compression. So that spring is exerting an upward force on the mass, and gravity is still pulling down, and you don't want to forget about that. So there's gravity, mg. 2 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared, and I get 19.6 newtons for that. And then I have the spring pushing up. And I know the spring force is going to be greater than the force of gravity. This thing is going to bounce up. And my spring force here is going to be kx. May as well just calculate that right over here. So I have 2,500 for k, and then x is 0.288 meters. And when I crunch the numbers on that, I get 720 newtons. So I just have a little bit of calculation to do. I'm going to write down Newton's second law. So F net on this thing is equal to MA. And the net force, well, that's 720 up. 
19.6 down equals 2 times a. Combining the numbers on the left and dividing by 2, I end up with a equals 350 meters per second squared. And we're done.